you're welcome for the creepy, blurry picture of a scientist there just staring intently at a chemical. Um, okay, we're going to jump into scientific method. We've covered this in class. I'm going to try to make this video short. Um, you'll have a note sheet that you can follow along and kind of fill in the blank that will help you ultimately on your quiz. Remember, science is the study of the natural world. Uh, and so it's the things that can be observed, measured, all around. Um, that is what science covers. It's not, we have, well, we'll talk about myths here in just a second, uh, or, or myths for what science is used for. Um, but this is something that is, uh, that is based on the premise and the thought that the universe is orderly, reasonable, and testable, and that it is consistent throughout the universe. Um, Many different types of fields of science, um, even major sciences like you take biology. There is molecular biology. There is um, marine biology. There is, I mean, there's microbiology. There's all sorts of subcategories of these sciences, uh, and so many, many different types of it. It should be objective, unbiased, and impartial, meaning that it is very scientific. That you follow an approach. You don't come in with a certain bias. A lot of times that's not how things work out, but that's how it should be. Now there's many myths, okay? Remember science is not just a collection of facts. Um, remember that it is not uh, a search for truth, uh, that ultimately science is about finding answers for how the natural world works. And so uh, it's, it's about kind of connecting the dots. Remember, science even changes over time. We had things that we believed 200 years ago that are not even remotely what we believe today. There are things that we believed 10 years ago that we don't remotely believe today. Remember, 200 years ago, we thought we breathed in something called phlogiston, okay? Um, where 100 years ago, we thought the atom was a small little, like, little tiny microscopic BB. Uh, and so we add to, we kind of peel back layers as we go through science. Um, Let's see, it, as we said, it should not be subjective, biased, or partial, uh, but a lot of times, since we're human, um, science can end up being that way, but it, that's really poorly done science. Um, hypothesis, educated guess. We'll still use that term, even though I think that it's kind of a weak term, uh, but that's because that's what you guys know, uh, is that a hypothesis is an educated guess. So, um, it should be based on some knowledge and research. That's where it comes in, like when I talked about if you've never seen a Frisbee and you throw a Frisbee out of a window, you might think that it somehow breaks the laws of gravity. Uh, but, you know, with research and knowledge, that makes it a better hypothesis. It needs to be testable. Uh, it's generally an if-then statement. If I do this, then this will happen. That's a good hypothesis. Uh, and it can be proven wrong. It does not have to be right. Uh, just generally when we get to the end of our experiment and it's proven wrong, you would start over again. Okay, That would hopefully lead you in a better place. Um, theory. Okay, We talked about the difference between the theory and law. Remember, a theory is not just a guess. It is an inference based on observable phenomenon. Okay, and so it is taking information that you can observe all right, and then ultimately making a, a hypothesis or a group of hypotheses beyond that. Um, so you take a kinetic molecular theory, the thought that molecules are always moving. Well, we don't exactly have great evidence that, that absolutely hardline says that molecules are always moving. But what we do have is we have a lot of observations of how like ice is a solid. When you heat it up, it turns into a liquid. You continue to heat it up, it turns into a gas. And so you take uh, observable phenomenon and you make an inference that that's ultimately what ha what's happening. And so while we're pretty certain that it's the case, we can't say definitively, you know, 100% without a doubt uh, because of that. And so it can be disproven, modified, changed. I'll tell you this, this is one myth it does not just graduate into becoming a law. Okay, so That's something I remember being taught, that after a hundred years or so, a theory becomes a law. And so the things that we, that we call theories today, probably a hundred, two hundred, three hundred years from now, might still consider to be a theory, or might be completely wiped from science books altogether. Um, a law. This generalizes observations, and it predicts something that at least generally uni we believe is universal. Okay, The law of gravity. Okay? Uh, you jump off a cliff, you're 100% of the time you're going to fall. Okay, um, and so these are these don't explain why, but these uh, these kind of just explain 
what we see happening, the actual behavior of something that as it happens. The law of conservation of mass. Mass, matter, and energy can neither be created nor destroyed in a regular chemical reaction. Well, in a normal chemical reaction, we've never been able to create nor destroy matter. Okay? It's, it's pretty much universal in that, in that sense. Okay? Um, criteria of science. It needs to be consistent, observable, natural, predictable, testable, tentative. And I didn't have a six finger there. You should, um, you should know these. Okay, these are these are six of them that you need to you need to remember. You can use that lovely acronym there at the top. I don't know, COD PTT there, whatever you want to go with. Um, Non-science. Okay, so these are things that do not necessarily meet that criteria. Um, that we would not necessarily call them a science. You take religion. Okay, religion would be something that deals with the supernatural. Since we said science is only about the natural world, we can't. You know, it's not that they're, that they're not that there can't be a relation between the two. But what we're saying is that it's it can't be tested using a scientific method. Um, you can use science. I mean, science can be within it, but you can't really. You know, define it using a scientific scientific terms. Okay, um, the like religion, philosophy. How we talk about the difference between astronomy and astrology. Okay, one science of celestial beings. Another one, try to predict the outcomes of life using the arrangements of the stars. Okay, um, scientific method. This is just an orderly process um, to try to keep us in check whenever we are doing a scientific experiment so that our own personal bias doesn't creep in but it still does a lot of times. Here are, the, here are the eight steps you need to know these. Ask a question, do research, construct a hypothesis, test it with an experiment, analyze results, uh, and draw a conclusion is kind of it within that. If your hypothesis is true, then you report the results. If it's false, then you've got to start back over. Um, and even if it's true, you still want to be able to repeat it because science has to be repeatable. Um, as for defining a question, you start with a good question that can be tested. Okay, and that's the big, big thing there. It has to be able to be tested. Um, then you do research. You don't just, you know, do something out of the blue. You need to make sure that somebody hasn't come along already and answered your question. And so you go and you do research about uh, about the topic uh, and, and be able to dig deep into it so that it makes sense. Uh, you know, and so that you have a so that you have a basis and a groundwork. Um, for your experiment. You then form your hypothesis. So it's not just like you make your hypothesis at the beginning, like that's kind of what we have done in school most of the time. But you form your hypothesis based on all of the results of your research, um, and then you figure out is it testable, is it a, a good statement, you know, can we figure this out. Um, you can also have a negative hypothesis or a null hypothesis. Um, let's see. Then you develop your experiment. It needs to test it. It needs to have steps. It needs to have. Um, it, it needs to only test one variable at a time, so that you're not just uh, kind of doing. Uh, so you're not just kind of juggling things uh, and, and being able to actually tell what is what is uh, is causing the uh, the change in the experiment. So. And then the, you need to be able to be retested so you can validate the results. If something happens once, it didn't really happen. Um, collect the data, lab notebooks. We'll be doing a lot with lab notebooks this year. But you collect your data. You have to. If there's a there's kind of a thought in science that if you don't write something down while you're doing an, an experiment, that thing didn't actually happen. And so you collect your data along the way. Write as much as you can about everything that's taking place. Um, you need to use good measurements. You need to use good units whenever you're doing it. Um, then you analyze that data comb through it, make charts, figure out averages, deviations, everything that you can from it, and then you ultimately come to your conclusion whether or not your hypothesis is correct or if it's wrong and it needs to be redone. Um, then after that you communicate, publish in a journal, become world famous until somebody two weeks later disproves what you're saying and then no one cares about you anymore. Um, and so there's a lot of stuff. I mean, we talked about this scientific method's not perfect. There's so much, many times that, that you've got to kind of go back to the beginning and, and redo things and kind of change stuff as you go. It's very fluid. Um, I mean, we try to do it very systematic in class, but in real life, real life it, it, it's very fluid. Um, 
We will talk about experimental design, and so you can read through this. Uh, one of the things we'll be doing in class is kind of building a couple of, of experiments, of, of at least modeling them. We won't actually probably do the experiments, but we will design some uh, in class. And so you can kind of read through uh, you know, and, and make sure that your experiment, when you create it, will be a very tight you know, experiment. Um, variables, anything that can be can change, <laughs> I can't talk, can be changed or controlled, um, or any changes that occur because something else changes. There's three types, independent, um, dependent, and controlled. Um, and so you can read about those three. You take here this example. In an experiment comparing the fizz released from different types of soda, you have the independent, which is the types of sodas tested. The dependent would be the amount of fizz released, and the controlled would be the size and types of the cans. You know, where did you get it from? How old are the cans? You know, things like that. Um, and now, contribution to science. We do all this so that you know that we can continue to learn, so that we continue to understand how the world works, um, and then also how this just relates to forensic science. Um, forensic science uses a lot of uh, things borrowed from just natural sciences. There's a lot of biology, there's a lot of chemistry, but also the process of doing things very systematically and trying to not use a lot of bias so that you don't go into a crime scene thinking you already know who the perpetrator is and then that kind of um, causes you to lean in that particular way when maybe the evidence suggests otherwise. and then you have the wrong person who ultimately gets arrested. And so it, we have to be very scientific and unbiased in our process as we go through analyzing a crime scene. So that is the contribution of science, and I try to get through this as quickly as possible. And do your other assignments, do your quiz, um, and I think I have a couple other videos for you guys to watch um, and analyze with the scientific method. There's some resources. Yeah.